గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ ఎవరివన్ టీచర్స్ ఎం క్రాంతి కుమార్ అసిస్టెంట్ ప్రొఫెసర్ ఇన్ సివిల్ డిపార్ట్మెంట్ ఫ్రమ్ పేస్ ఇన్స్టిట్యూట్ ఆఫ్ టెక్నాలజీ అండ్ సైన్సెస్ వల్లూర్ ప్రకాశం డిస్టిక్ ఆంధ్రప్రదేశ్ అండ్ టుడే వీ ఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు డిస్కస్ అవర్ సెకండ్ లెక్చర్ ఇన్ రిమోట్ సెన్సింగ్ అండ్ జిఎస్ దట్ ఈస్ జియోగ్రాఫికల్ ఇన్ఫర్మేషన్ సిస్టమ్ అండ్ బేసికలీ ఈ జియోగ్రాఫిక్ ఇన్ఫర్మేషన్ సిస్టమ్ జిఎస్ is an information system for capturing storing analyzing managing and presenting data which are spatially referenced means uh, it is linked to location and this gis technology links geographic information with uh, descriptive information a gis map can present many layers of different information and each layer represents a particular trait of the map and this traits can be laid on top of one another creating a unique view of geographic area and layers can be added and removed to build each map and we discuss what is gs and now we have to look into what what is the purpose of gs the purpose of gs to support decision making for planning and management of land use natural resources environment transportation urban facilities and other administrative records and now coming to the benefits of gis geospatial data better maintained in a standard format revision and uh, updating is uh, easier and geospatial data and information is easier to search analyze and present and value added products can be generated geospatial data can be shared and exchanged freely and productivity and efficiency of staff is improved and there is saving in time and money and a better decision making can be done with gs and it should be noted that gs has benefited from technical and conceptual developments and over time in various areas such as surveying cartography photogrammetry remote sensing cad sp- spatial analysis etc and maximize the efficiency of planning and decision making and to provide efficient means for data distribution and handling elimination of redundant database and minimize duplication capacity to integrate information from many sources complex analysis query involving geographical reference data to generate new information and gs data geographical information data is mainly of uh, two types one is spatial and the second one is non spatial and the spatial data is that which has physical dimensions and geographical locations on the surface of earth the spatial data has uh, physical dimensions and it has uh, geographical locations on our at surface and uh, if we see the example for spatial data a river a state boundary a lake a state capital all comes under spatial data and now coming to non spatial data non spatial data is that qualifies the data attribute or non spatial data describes some aspects of spatial data not specified by its uh, geometry alone and coming to the representation of spatial information spatial uh, information can be represented by using three types point line and polygon point feature it indicates a discrete location by a special symbol or label it is a single xy coordinates and line feature is a uh, feature used to represent a line or a set of ordered xy coordinates and if you observe here this is the line feature which uh, connecting the point features and this is the point feature if you observe here it is mentioned clearly and next coming to components of gs which is very very important concept in gs and 
here basically there are five types of components of GS are present they are hardware software data procedure and people and coming to hardware it consists of the computer hardware system on which our GS software runs and our GS software runs on whole spectrum of computer systems means we can use it in portable personal computers to multi user supercomputers and the hardware for GS consists of input devices such as digitizers, scanners, GPS receivers and the storage devices such as magnetic tapes, disks, CD-ROMs and other optical disks and it also includes central processing units and output devices such as display devices, printers and plotters. And next coming to software. Software refers to the programs on which our computer runs. And our GS software provides the functions and tools that are necessary to store, analyze and display our geographic information. And some commonly used GS softwares are ArcGIS, ArcView, ArcSTE, ArcIMS, MapInfo, etc. And web-based GS is another concept which is becoming very popular nowadays and it uses the web application software. A common practice in GS is using MS Access, Oracle, SQL Server, etc. as a DBMS software along with chosen GS software. And next coming to our third component procedure. A computer system for GS consists of hardware, software and procedures designed to support the data for capturing, storage, processing, analysis, modeling and display of geospatial data. These three components work together to support our data for doing these activities and the technical components like hardware, software and databases institutional framework and policies are also important for a functional GIS. The organizational setup for collecting spatial data, analysis procedures and using the results for planning and implementation from a very important component in a GIS. A successful GIS operates according to a well-designed plan and business rules which are the models and operating practices unique to each organization. And next coming to our fourth component that is data we have already discussed that there are two types of data are present geospatial data and non-geospatial data which is also known as attribute data and this GS data is handled in databases with special functional requirement as well as general characteristics of any standard database and the sources of spatial data or digitized maps, aerial photographs and standard database and geographic data and related tabular data can be collected by surveying or purchasing from a commercial data provider and the digital map forms are basic data input for the GIS and next coming to users, users are nothing but the people who are using this uh, GIS software a GS system. The role of the user are to select relevant information, to set necessary standards, to design cost efficient updating schemes, to analyze GS outputs for relevant purposes. It is the main responsibility of our users to select the relevant information which is useful for us, for our institution and which is cost efficient. We have to select that type of uh, information and the different type of users interact with the GAS in many different levels and ways. So these five are the components of GAS. And next coming to GAS application areas. GAS is used in different different applications in our day to day life. And now we are going to discuss about the different applications of uh, GAS and GS is used in land management, network analysis, incident mapping, spatial measurement, corridor selection, transportation modeling, logistics routing, resource exploration, 
facility management, geo process modeling, spread and diffusion, topographic analysis, demographic analysis, engineering design, site selection, watershed analysis, resource inventories. These are the different application areas in which our GIS is used. And the next topic we are discussing is the map projections. Map projections is nothing but uh, it is the transformation of our earth surface which is three dimensional to a Cartesian coordinates that is uh, two dimensional. It is a systematic transformation of points on our earth surface to corresponding points on a plane surface and map projections always introduce some type of uh, distortion selection of a projection is done to minimize the distortion for the particular application and here coming to the necessity of map projections uh, for people it is difficult to make globes with large scales and it is also not convenient to carry them around so in this purpose we are doing map projections which are easy to carry and we can do projections with large scales also and creating maps we must choose an appropriate projection for the map to communicate effectively and part of good cartographic design sharing or receiving geographic data along with the datum coordinate system map projection should also be known to store data and map projections make it possible to overlay maps from originally different projections and if you observe here uh, types and views of projection there are three types of uh, projections are mainly present there are azimuthal conical and uh, cylindrical and here this is uh, azimuthal and uh, this is uh, conical and uh, this is uh, cylindrical and coming to projection aspects our cylindrical projection has uh, three types of aspects that is regular oblique and uh, transverse means in regular it is placed in a regular position that is vertically and oblique it is placed with some angle and in transverse it is placed horizontally and next coming to conical projection it has two aspects that are regular and uh, oblique and coming to azimuthal projection it has three aspects they are polar oblique and uh, equatorial polar is the one in which projection is done with reference to poles and in equatorial projection is done with reference to equator and these are the standard lines or points and now we are going to discuss about the data entry and preparation means how the data is entered for our GIS software and now we are going to discuss about the spatial data spatial data is also known as geospatial data or geographic information it is the data or information that identifies the geographic location of features and boundaries on earth such as natural or constructed features oceans and more and this spatial data is usually stored in the form of coordinates and topology and is data that can be mapped and spatial data is often accessed manipulated or analyzed through geographic information system that is GIS and all geographical data can be reduced to three basic geographical phenomena that is point line and area and if we have to represent an oil well which is a single object we can represent it by using a point entity which has uh, xy coordinate and if we want to represent a road which is the combination of points we have to represent it by using the line feature by a series of xy coordinates 
and if we want to represent a flat plane which is represented by an area entity covering a set of xy coordinates and now coming to input of our spatial data generally there are two methods for uh, spatial data acquisition primary methods and secondary methods and in primary methods surveying photo gra photogrammetric gps and remote sensing comes under primary methods and digitization automatic line following and scanning comes under secondary methods and the modes of data input are grid overlay keyboard digitizer scanner data in digital format and coming to our first one grid overlay in this on clear material grid is formed and identification of each cell in the grid is determined by what map features are in a particular cell and number or code is assigned to each class of map features and use it to label cells in grid and after filling in the grid numbers or codes are typed into our computer to produce a raster layer and pretty antiquated method uh, this one is means it is a very old method and nowadays grid overlay method is not using and the second method for data acquisition is uh, keyboard entry and keyboard entry is the entry of data into a file at a computer terminal and it is also known as key coding and it is used for attribute data that are available only on paper and this method is used when the coordinates of this spatial entities are known and there are too many of them and it can be used to enter land record information and next coming to digitization Digitization is a process of converting existing maps to digital format means to converting the physical maps into digital format we call it as digitization and in this a digitizer is connected to our computer and map features are followed manually and different sizes of digitizers are available like A4, A3, A2, A0 and the example of digitizers are Calcomp 9500 and uh, Sumographic and here using three different modes like point mode, stream mode and uh, uh, line mode we represent the data and here digital tablet is present tablet is nothing but it is a flat surface in which there are embedded grid of electronically active wires are present and a mouse like device called puck or stylish is present it ha usually have uh, cross hairs and when uh, this mouse like device puck is moved over the tablet its location is known because the grid of wires sends its location puck also has buttons which allow communication with the computer and this grid acts like cartesian means xy coordinate system and to input data map is tapped on digitizing table puck is placed over the feature of interest and messages can be sent to our computer through buttons on puck for example if node is used to mark beginning and end of line feature or point where polygon closes on itself and this is the table digitizing tablet which we discussed it is a flat surface and map is placed on that and by using the mouse like device puck it is moved on that map and the location and the information is given to the computer this is a process in which uh, the digitization can be done manually and now coming to the problems we faced in digitizing uh, basically these paper maps are unstable because uh, um, they are not stable so each time when map is removed from the digitizing table there may be a chance for the reference points uh, must be re-entered and if the map has stretched or shrunk in the interim the newly digitized points will be slightly off their location which is a drawback for us and in some cases errors also occurs on these maps and these errors are entered into the GIS database also 
end. The level of error in the GS database is directly related to the error level of the source maps and maps are meant to display information and don't always accurately record uh, locational information. Uh, for example, when we have to represent a railroad stream and road all go through a narrow mountain pass. Actually in a narrow mountain pass the place is very small. But if we want to represent these three features then we have to represent it with uh, a size wider than uh, the original so it is one of the drawback and if roads are streams that don't meet exactly when two map sheets are placed next to each other when there is a continuation of roads and by using two maps if we want to enter it into our computer they don't meet exactly that is also a drawback and next coming to the next method for uh, data input is scanning it is the most commonly used method of automatic digitizing and the scanning is a process of converting existing maps to digital form and it is an appropriate method of data encoding when raster data are required and a scanner is a piece of uh, hardware which is used for converting an analog source document to a digital raster form and basically scanners are of two types flatbed scanner rotating drum scanner and the sensors move along the axis of rotation in the rotating drum scanner and are of uh, high quality here a digital image of the map is produced uh, by moving an electronic detector across the map surface and uh, splines occurred on the scanned output can be removed by using a process called thinning and this is the scanning devices which are used for uh, scanning uh, the physical maps and the problems we faced in scanners are scanners are generally very expensive and uh, for editing purpose it takes a lot of time uh, as we done manually and uh, scanners should be time saving devices only when maps are clear show good contrast and contain a relatively simple amount of content but it is difficult when maps are not clear and uh, it has uh, low contrast or uh, we, uh, the data is uh, large then it is uh, time taking and uh, it is a problematic also and the other method for uh, data acquisition is uh, coordinate geometry procedure this method involves the input of uh, spatial data involves the calculation and entry of coordinates using coordinate geometry that is CO GIVO procedures this involves entering from survey data the explicit measurement of features from some uh, known monument and uh, this input techniques is obviously it is very costly and labor intensive it is rarely used for natural resource applications in GIS and now we have to discuss about the conversion of existing digital data a variety of spatial data is available uh, to us from a range of government and private uh, resources and the most common digital data used in GIS is uh, the data from CAD systems a number of data conversion programs exist mostly from GS software and vendors to transform the, that data from CAD formats into our GS data format and several ad hoc standards for data exchange have been established in the marketplace and these are supplemented by a number of government distribution formats that have been uh, developed so uh, in our next lecture we will discuss about the uh, different data models used in GES. Thank you.